All right, we are back with the Orange County Real Estate Beat. My name is Lane. And I am Scott. Welcome to today's show. All right, today we're going to be talking about why should you invest in real estate? Why indeed? Well, proof is in the pudding for me. I've been involved in real estate for 34 years since I was in my 20s, and I can attest to the fact that appreciation is the number one goal that you want to have because it's amazing what history has shown us appreciation does to the value of your portfolio if you invest in home ownership. Yeah, and I can attest to the fact that I've been in real estate for 34 years, minus 24 years, so it's been about 10 <laughs> years. But uh, let's, talk, let's talk about some uh, average appreciation. Let's start with that, okay? So average appreciation over the last 12 months in Orange County. That's oh, crazy. 34.7% in some areas. What? That's a huge number. Hold, That's a, hold, hold the phone. Would you repeat that number, please? 34.7%. And in a lot of areas in Orange County, we're seeing 20, 25%. In some areas of Orange County, we're seeing 34.7%. So at least 20% appreciation in one year. Now, let's do a little bit of spoiler alert. We don't want our viewers out to, to expect that's going to be the norm if they went out and bought a house today, that over the course of history, they're going to have that double digit every single year. However, yeah, it's we'll probably see some strong appreciation again will. this year. And over time. And over time, yeah. Now, for those of you that are fearful of buying at the top, you know, prices are really high right now. Um, and if you bought at the top, so let's talk about that. So if you bought in 2007, that was towards the peak before the last recession versus today, and let's say you held on to your home for 15 years, you'd see an average appreciation of in Orange County of 83%. So that's equivalent to a little over 5.5% every single year since you bought the home. Absolutely. And one of the things that we've been telling our clients, advising them, they look to us for advice and since 1988, when I started the business, actually, Lane hasn't been here that long, but is I've taken the advice of some of the stock market gurus out there who have traditionally exceeded and excelled over all the course of the decades. And that's don't try to time the market. Time the decision based on your time in life. If it's time to turn the page in your chapter of life and get onto home ownership, work with a trusted real estate advisor. Do the best you can given the terms and the values at that point in time. Mm -hmm. That sounds good. That's very good advice. Um, if you bought in 2007 and, yes. then, and then the market crash. Yes, sir. How long does it take for you to become profitable? That's probably going to be the next question again, because you're probably going to be, there's going to be several years where you're going to feel like you're underwater. Yep. You're, you're paying on a mortgage and you're paying on a value that, you know, is higher than what the homes are worth during that time. Yes, sir. Uh, in 2007, it took seven years to become profitable and in the green again. Yep. And seven years seems like an eternity for a lot of people. But again, when we're looking at the, the length of home ownership, the average person stays in their home in Orange County now more than seven years. Oh, yeah, absolutely. 14, 15. Yeah. Is, or no, actually, in some areas like Westminster, Huntington Beach, Fountain Valley, it's getting close to 20 years now. Yeah. So that goes that goes back earlier before. So if you bought in 2007, waited 15 years, like a lot of people are staying in their <laughs> yeah. homes now, you still have 83% appreciation. Exactly. Now, if you bought in 2007 and you stayed in your home for 10 years, you'd have about, um, in 2017, you'd have about 20% appreciation okay. in total. So uh, a lot of times when I take my buyers out and they, and they have like a five-year plan and they ask me where I think the market it's going to go. I do tell them, you know, if you think this is a five-year plan, can you still see yourself living in it for eight years if you need to? Yeah. I think that's great advice, Lane. And again, understanding that we can't time every single year of the market. There's ups and, ups and downs. There's world events that change things just a little bit. So many of our first-time buyers do say they have a five-year plan. And Lane's magic question is, could you stay seven or eight years if you needed to? Because if you can add that little bit of a cushion to the plan, you're pretty much going to be in great shape no matter what. Yeah, and during that time, while your house is hopefully, you know, back at profitable after seven or eight years, you're still buying down the principal in your loan. That's right. And so then you're still building equity in that way too. So when you go to sell, you have a smaller loan amount mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and you have a little bit of appreciation. So you have a bigger nest egg to walk away with. Now, for those that aren't really good at saving, yeah. you want to talk about that a little bit? I think we should. Okay. You know, number one, real estate's a leveraged investment. So for example, you put a dollar in the bank and you earn 10% on that, you're going to have a dollar 10. With real estate, you're going to put 20% down. So you buy something for a dollar, you're only going to be putting 20 cents into that investment and the appreciation is st still going to be the same. So number one, you're going to make more money with appreciation in a leverage investment in investment, and it's forced discipline. Lane, let's talk about that a little bit. Yeah. So if you had a million dollar house and yes. you put 20% down, that's $200,000, right? Now in what investment is it out there? 
if you saw 34%, 34% appreciation on a million dollar house, now all of a sudden you made 340,000 in 12 months on a $200,000 investment, what other investment vehicle is out there that could allow that to happen? Absolutely. And again, you need to look at your rate of return for that because again, you have 34% appreciation on the value of the house that you pay, but your rate of return is going to be exponential compared to that because the rate of return is based on that amount that you put down, the actual money that you put out of pocket. So the leverage investment is perfect. The appreciation is perfect, but it's also a forced savings account. Correct. Too. Okay. So, yeah. Yep. Yeah. So like for me, I'm not the best at every month putting some money into my savings account. I could be better. I mean, and I'm getting better, okay. but for, and if for those that are like me and you pay on your mortgage, you have no other choice than to pay your mortgage payment mm -hmm. every month. Otherwise the bank's going to foreclose on your house. And you're basically forcing that savings account, that mortgage, that house that you own is kind of like another savings bucket. Absolutely. And there's another little trick that you can do. Let's say you do plan to stay in the house 10, 15 years or so. You can go ahead and talk to your mortgage advisor, even use one of the apps online and figure out how you can add to your payment each month to start paying down that principal faster. So you can manipulate and pay your house off in any set amount of time that you want to do by, again, adjusting your payment each month. So a portion of it's going to go to the mortgage interest. A portion is going to go to principal. You can adjust it, put even a little more to principal, and again, pay that down sooner. And again, that can become, as Lane says, forced savings because you can pick the amount. You can do an automatic de debit from your checking account. You never have to even think about it. And I think I, I was reading this yesterday, so don't quote me on these exact numbers, but I believe they were using the example of a $500,000 mortgage. If you made one extra payment during the year, made, instead of doing 12 payments, you made 13 payments in the year. After the course of your loan, you would save $100,000. Absolutely. And I'm going to throw something out here now. Again, we throw out that card, how long I've been in the business. And I know when I was in my 20s and we were thinking about investing, you tend to not even think more than five, seven, 10 years down the line. You don't think 20 or 30 years down the line, but you know what? In an instant, it's there. And the decisions that you make when you're first getting into the marketplace will pay off and reap dividends in that 20 to 30 year period. So don't discount the fact of kind of thinking out long term. I'm living proof of that. Yeah. And we love providing information for those of you that are watching out there. Please make sure that you're subscribed to our channel, like us, liking us on all the social media pages. But if you heard something that you feel somebody else would find value, share that with them too. That's the best way to say thank you to us. But we love coming every week with the Orange County Real Estate Beat and we'll see you next week. See you next week. Thanks for watching.